Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, let us discuss about performance metrics for machine learning models. So let us first start with accuracy. So accuracy helps us in understanding the statistical power of prediction of your machine learning model. So in context of classification, accuracy to be more precise is defined as the number of correctly classified points divided by the total number of points that are there in your dataset, testing dataset. So I told you about the splitting of dataset into various portions, namely training, testing and validation datasets in one of the videos. For testing our statistical power of prediction for our model, we need an environment which is entirely different from the one on which our model was trained on. Hence we cannot predict the accuracy of our model by the training dataset and therefore we require testing dataset to estimate the performance of your model with new data points. Now accuracy can vary from 0 to 1, 1 being the best value for accuracy and 0 being a low value for accuracy for your model. Also it is one of the most simple performance metrics for classification. To understand about accuracy, let us consider a simple example for classifying mails into spam and safe. Suppose you are given 100 emails. And in your dataset, suppose you have 74 emails which are not spam, that is, they are safe emails and say 26 emails are your spam emails. Now suppose we have a classifier model that was trained on the dataset and it correctly classified 64 out of 74 safe emails as safe and rest as spam. From the remaining emails out of 100, that is 26 spam emails, it correctly classified 18 emails out of these as spam but failed to classify the rest of the emails as spam. So how many incorrect classifications were made by our model? For the safe emails that we were having, in a collection of 100 emails, 10 were incorrectly classified as safe and 8 were incorrectly classified as spam. So in all, we have 18 misclassifications or 18 incorrect classifications. So it's clear that the model made 18 incorrect classifications or you can see that the model made 18 errors. So you can see that the number of correct classifications is 82 and the number of incorrect classifications is 18. So number of correct classifications is 82 and number of incorrect classifications is 18. So we can see the accuracy for our model comes out to be 82%. So now before proceeding to other classification metric, let us first understand the problems associated to this classification metric and that is imbalanced data. So suppose you have your test data set and in that we have 75% of our test data indicating that the email is not a spam which is it indicates that email is a safe email and 25% of the test data, the very same test data indicate that the email is a spam. Now because of the problem what will happen is that the model will give a false impression of high accuracy because as you can see that 75% of your dataset is occupied with emails that are safe emails and only 25% are those that are in spam class thus giving an incorrect accuracy of 75% based on imbalanced data. So this means that the accuracy is not a good performance metric for imbalanced data. So avoid using accuracy as a metric when we have imbalanced data in our dataset. So now let us move to another concept here which is called as the confusion matrix and let us understand how it can help us. So as a simple example you can see, so as a simple example let us take a case of binary classification that is we have two classes, class 0 and class 1. So as you can see we are having a 2 by 2 matrix with two rows and two columns. Now the order of the matrix is 2 cross 2 because in binary classification we will deal with two classes. So suppose we have a test data set with k data points where for each such data point we have the actual class label that is the actual value provided by the data set because you know we are dealing with supervised learning in case of classification. And let us say for each data point we also have the predicted value represented by y cap. So you can see that there are only four possibilities. That is the first possibility is actual label is zero, which is represented by the first cell of your confusion matrix and predicted value is zero, which corresponds to a correct classification. Now case two, where the actual value is one 
and the predicted value is zero which corresponds to an incorrect classification at this with red shade now case three actual label is zero predicted value is one which corresponds to an incorrect classification and the case four is actual label is one predicted value is one which corresponds to a correct classification now this concept can be easily extended to a multi-class classifications where you may have n such classes and then it will be an n cross n confusion matrix so if the number of correct classifications that is the elements that are there along the diagonal of your confusion matrix on the principal diagonal of your confusion matrix such classifications are on a higher side then you can conclude that your model is doing reasonably well and it has a decent statistical power of prediction on the other hand if number of correct classifications are on a lower side that means your model is a poor performing model and it didn't learn well in its training process now remember that i said in the previous videos that no model is a perfect model each and every model will have some error element associated to it this discussion simply boils down to one more result that all the principal diagonal elements in case of a confusion matrix should have high number of correct classifications in order to have an overall estimation of the statistical power of prediction of your model so do take a note of this result so now there is a term for each cell of the matrix and let us discuss about them now so this cell represents the true negative which means that the actual value was a zero so the actual values are represented horizontally so this zero and this one represents the actual value which is along the x-axis or you can say along the horizontal axis and the predicted values are represented vertically so predicted zero and predicted one so the actual values are those values that serve as the labels in your data set and the predicted values are those that are predicted by your model and we are having only two values zero and one so there is a term for each cell of the matrix and let us discuss about them now so this cell the very first cell which is this one represents a true negative which means that the actual value was zero so actual value which is represented by this zero where my cursor is currently sitting on and the model correctly predicted it as a zero so this is a true negative so actually it was a zero and the model correctly predicted it to be a zero that means true negative so we are seeing it as a negative because we consider here zero as the negative class and one as the positive class then this cell represents a false negative which is this one which means the actual value was a one was a positive class but the model incorrectly classified it as zero okay so this cell then this cell represents false negative means actual value was one so as you can see from the diagram but the model incorrectly predicted it as a zero that means it incorrectly classified points that were actually one as zero then coming to the third cell which is this one it represents false positives means that the actual value was a zero but the model incorrectly classified it to be a positive class or to be a one which means a false positive so the model falsely predicted it to be a one but actually it was a zero moving on to the last cell this represents true positives and what it means is that the actual value was a positive class or it was one and the model correctly predicted it to be a one and hence the term true positive for it so now let us discuss about some terminologies now if we sum up the elements along the two columns for the case of binary classification we have p as the number of actual positives which is false negatives plus true positives you can denote this using small p and the number of actual negatives can be denoted using small n which is true negatives plus false positives so now let us discuss about some very important terms pertaining to the confusion matrix so we have the true positive rate which denotes the number of true positives upon the number of actual positives which is tp divided by p then we have false positive rate which is number of false positives upon the number of actual negatives which is fp divided by n then we have the true negative rate which is the number of true negatives upon the number of actual negatives which is tn divided by n 
and then we have false negative rate which is number of false negatives divided by the number of actual positives which is fn divided by p so now let us consider an example and compute all the above terms by assuming a test data set that has 750 negative points denoting class 0 so if you total this up 550 plus 200 it comes out as 750 which is 750 negative points denoting class 0 and 250 data points denoting class 1 which is 120 plus 130 so now we know that each cell of the matrix represents so now we know what each cell of the matrix represents let us fill some values within each cell so if we take on the values for tn which is true negatives as 550 the false positives as 200 the false negatives as 120 and true positive as 130 so you can see the total number of actual positives is 250 which is 120 plus 130 it represents your small p which is the number of actual positives and the total number of actual negatives is 750 which is 550 plus 200 so if we apply the formula that we just learned we can calculate the true positive rate as 130 divided by 130 plus 120 which gives us a ratio of 130 by 250 which can be reduced into percentage as 52 percent the false positive rate comes out to be 26.6 percent true negative rate is 73.33 percent and false negative rate is 48 percent so this was all about the confusion matrix that i wanted to discuss in this video so now let us move forward and understand about the concept of precision recall and something called as the f1 score so these two terms precision and recall are very much related to confusion matrix so let us understand these terms now precision says so let us go back to the diagram so precision says from all the points that a model predicted to be positive which is this along this axis which is 200 and 130 so this row it says from all the points that a model predicted to be positive how much percentage of those points are actually positive okay so it will be 130 upon 200 plus 130 so you can easily evaluate it will come out to be some percentage value so it will be 130 upon 330 into 100 so you can calculate the percentage for it or you can uh, reduce that to a fraction and it should lie between 0 and 1 so this is precision that means 130 points are actually positive from a collection of points that the model predicted to be positive so this ratio is of course 130 upon 200 plus 130 which is 130 by 330 or you can say precision is tp because this cell represents tp if i go back to my slides tp upon tp plus fp so this is precision if I talk about recall, recall is defined as of all the points which are actual positives that is along this direction which is the second column. So just focus on the second column. It is defined as of all the points which are actual positives that is the second column. How much percentage of those points are also predicted by the model to be actual positive which is 130 upon 130 plus 120 so there are 130 such points that are predicted by the model to be actually positive from a collection of points which are actual positives that is from 250 such points we have 130 such points that are predicted by the model to be actually positive and here the collection of points that you are taking into account are actually positives okay as you can see so recall can also be said as true positives upon the number of actual positives so if i go back to my slide 7 it is true positives upon true positives plus false negatives or you can say tp which is true positives divided by p and p is false negatives plus true positives and here are the formulas you can take a note of this so now comes another metric which combines both the precision and recall and that is known as the f1 score remember that we want both precision and recall to have high values and they both lie between 0 and 1 so mathematically the f1 score can be defined as 
2 into precision into recall divided by precision plus recall. So F1 score is the harmonic mean of precision and recall. So if you are not aware about the harmonic mean, the link for an article pertaining to it can be found down below. Also your F1 score will lie between 0 and 1 since both precision and recall lie between 0 and 1. So now coming to the final topic of this video which is receiver operating characteristic curve or generally a topic which is known as the ROC AUC curve. Now the ROC and AUC curves are yet another important performance evaluation metrics for any classification model. By studying the curves you can compare multiple classifiers with each other and check which has the best statistical power of prediction that is which model performs better in what scenario. Now here comes the concept of AUC curve which can help us to compare the ROC curve of one model to another. AUC curve gives the rate at which you are getting the correct classifications by your model. So as you can see in the ROC AUC curve shown in the slide, AUC is known as the area under curve. You can clearly see that the area under curve for the red ROC curve, just focus on the cursor which is this one, is much greater than the AUC curve for the green ROC curve. So you can compare various classification models by the area under curve of their ROC curves. So what we can deduce from this ROC AUC curve is that the classifier corresponding to your red ROC curve has the best statistical power of prediction and is the best classifier as compared to other ones shown in the diagram because they are having less area under curve compared to the red classifier. So this was all about the performance evaluation metrics for classification that I wanted to discuss. So if you like the video, do subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to get notifications for all upcoming uploads. Also, don't forget to share the channel with your friends and colleagues. And I will see you guys in the very next video.